for dorsiflexion. Let's have us just do it in a front foot elevated, get some leverage on it. I wanna make sure, you, you're saying you're not getting any more dorsiflexion than what you currently have. So let's make sure the quality of our input is good, right? A lot of people stretch their calves, right? They just do a tra tra traditional calf stretch like that. But we want knee bent dorsiflexion so that when we squat, we have the depth there. Let's make sure your heel's down. I want you to play around with the angle that your knee is traveling over your toe, whether it's in, forward, or out. And we're finding a stretch on the backside, okay? If you have pinching on the front, then we need to work on plantar flexion first. And that's a separate issue. Let's start with whatever ankle you want to do first. Make sure we find the right tissue that's stretching, right line of tissue. You're leveraging your body weight over your knee. Do we feel backside ankle lengthening there? More calf, but a little okay. bit. Push your heel down. Are you able to find more Achilles lengthening? Okay, you found your Achilles Perfect. lengthening. The back, yeah, that's fine with me. So all of the backside ankle where the calf and the Achilles meet, and we have no pinching on the front side. Okay, hang out there. Just like everything else, two minute stretch. I want you to play around as well with if you travel your knee this way and rotate your ankle a little bit, right? Different line of tissue right there versus going outward more like over your little toes. Okay, there isn't one or the other that's better or worse. It's whatever line of tissue you need for your dorsiflexion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Stay in this level of dorsiflexion that we have you in, whatever feels the best for you. If you like oscillating between all of it, then fine, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You got another minute of a stretch here. So you've been stretching for two minutes. We have stretch on the back side of our ankle. Don't move your knee or hip at all. Okay, I don't want you to come out of this position when you start contracting. Okay, you need to maintain your current position. Start pushing your toes down like your calf raising out of dorsiflexion, right? So all you're doing is you're in this position and you're calf raising up out of it, but you can't because you're blocking yourself here. So if I'm trying to peel your toes up, you're pushing down against my fingers. You got it. Yeah. We feel the backside of the ankle contracting, tensing, right? Not stretching anymore. And the toes are driving down into the platform to squeeze the calf and the Achilles and feeling how those two are responsible together for plantar flexion. So if you can't lengthen on the backside of your ankle when you get into to your dorsiflexion, you can't shorten the front side all that much. Does that make sense? So like your dorsiflexors can only get so good because the backside of your ankle is so restricted. Dial that up a little bit. Give me another 10 seconds. You feel backside, calf, Achilles, there's no pinching in the front. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Try to push all the toes down evenly. Five, four, three, two, one, don't move a thing. Reverse, lift the toes up, go deeper into dorsiflexion. You're trying to bring your toes to your knee. We're feeling the front side of the ankle contracting and all you're trying to do is lift your toes up, but you are so deep into dorsiflexion that your toes actually aren't moving up. Okay, so for someone watching the video, the toes coming up is not the objective. It's the contraction of the tibia, right? The front side of our shin and ankle while we're in this position, right? Tissue training, that movement training. If you just focus on the foot coming up and you feel like you're not doing anything, we lost sight of the goal, keep railing, keep lifting up. Try to squeeze this a little bit harder. Give me another five, four, three, two, one, and relax it. Did you feel the difference when all your toes contracted evenly though? There's a big element of that where like some people will push just from the big toe and the bi two big toes and then their little toes aren't firing or vice versa. Getting all five toes to contract will get us the most potency out of that drill. Yeah, work through that, move through it. Do you see where the quality of your dorsiflexion can improve maybe? Like you're saying you're not getting any better. If, if, it's, not, if it's not that hard every time, then like you're not creating enough noise for it to change. It's close to that hard every time. Is it? It shouldn't hit you that hard then. <laughs> yeah, move that around, get a couple ankle cars going through that, and then uh, we'll do the other leg. So, same deal. We're in whatever level of dorsiflexion we can handle. The heel is flat on the ground. We have a stretch in the calf and the Achilles, the back side of our ankle, and we have no pinching on the front side. All right, hold it there. A two minute stretch, yep, and you can play around with whatever angle that the knee and hip are traveling to find the length and tissue that we need. Good, breathe into that too. Just like what we did for the spine, right? You need to make sure you're breathing through that, trying to release it, breathe into the stretch, and then get a little deeper. It's a little sad how little dorsiflexion I have. I mean, at least your knee is over your toe, yeah. right? Like it is going That's over. about as far, yeah. I mean, there are other people that their knee literally doesn't travel over their toe at all, and then they get pinching on the front side on top of that, you know? So 
the fact that your knee actually is over your toe right now, you have open side stretching and you have no closing side pinching, like the ankle is, you know, healthy enough to train, good enough to train. Yeah. And we're not digging out of a hole, you know, we're like already halfway out of the hole. Keep hanging out there. You got another 45 seconds of stretching. Keep breathing into that. If you can push into a little bit more dorsiflexion as you relax, do that. Leverage your body weight as long as that's still getting a stretch, right? If you try to push deeper and we start getting pinching or the heel starts coming up, then we're kind of losing sight of it. The knee over the toe is not the only thing we're looking for here, right? It's how far can the knee go over the toe with these other things in mind. With the constraints. Yeah, with the constraints. It's, that's exactly it. It's the same thing as everything else, right? Like how much can you get with the constraints that we're labeling it? We're just onto anchoring it. certain parts of the body so other parts of the body. Can, yes. Yeah. So other parts of the body can do what we need them to do. So more isn't better, better is better. So that was two minutes. Don't move a thing now. I like the idea of yourself, you anchoring yourself here. Can you start paling and driving the toes down again, right? So you're trying to calf raise out of this, right? All we're trying to do is plant our flex our ankle and push it through our toes. You feel the backside of the ankle contracting, right? The Achilles, the calf. If somebody has a hard time feeling it, I would tell them to pale longer and maybe not as hard. If it clicks pretty well right away, then go ahead and just start paling. Have some pretty decent contractions there. Let's give you another 30 seconds of creating tension there. You're doing a very good job maintaining that level of dorsiflexion. The knee hasn't pushed back away from your toes at all. You got another 20 seconds. Give me another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, relax, don't move a thing. Rail, lift the toe up. You feel this contracting. You're trying to peel the toes up towards the knee and you're trying to close this gap. And backside stretch too. Okay, try to feel front side shortening. I got okay. I got both. You got both, okay, so you feel both. Maybe try to- Way more backside stretch okay. than the other foot. Okay, so your backside on this ankle's tight enough where it's ha you're having a hard time shortening this because this backside can't lengthen as much, okay? Your inability to lengthen the back of your ankle is creating a restriction and how well the front side can shorten. I think another stretch pale on rail would open it up more. Yeah. Probably, and you might need more volume for that ankle. Yeah. There's something to be said there. If you want to rail longer and try to find more front side ankle, there's merit there, right? Like putting more stimulus into this right here. If it helps, you kind of take tension from the back side and transfers it to the front side. Give me another five, four, three, two, one. Relax that. Let's get a couple ankle cars, move that around. It's always the stiff after I do it though. Like dead after? 